When Mozart turned 21, he wrote his ninth piano concerto and decided to break the rules. Okay, he'd already written eight other piano concertos, not to mention some 30 symphonies, a dozen operas. Anyway, the point is that Mozart was ready to strut his stuff to the world. The concerto has since gained the moniker Jeune Homme, Young Man. And remember, you only gain a title for your piece when you've done something special. It's an assured work, and no doubt the audience was enjoying its premiere when suddenly, halfway through the third movement, something rather remarkable happened. The piano suddenly sedates the tempo and introduces, right in the middle of our fast final movement, a stately minuet. To us today, it just sounds sweet, but to the audience who first listened to it, this moment would have come as a huge surprise. The classical concerto uses a rhythmic template in movement terms, fast, slow, faster. The classical symphony repeats the trick, but adds a third movement, usually in a dance form. For a more detailed look at that, check out my last video on tempos. The idea with both forms is to have a fast, exciting finish. So the last movement is always fast, but Mozart upsets our expectations and does it in the most confidently assured manner. Mozart had already signalled the changes right at the start of the piece. Usually, the orchestra introduces the first section of a concerto, but here, Mozart gives the piano an immediate response. It's a kind of sneak preview. We gain so much in our exhaustingly detailed digital culture with access to most anything written and performed, but there are a few small details that today we may lose. Mozart's audience never expected the piano to come in right at the start like that, and it would have thrilled them. And that stately minuet? I think today we can lose the nerve, the sheer chutzpah, of Mozart suddenly breaking rhythm like that. In any case, I'd hazard this minuet is the reason the piano concerto gained its nickname. Mozart broke the rules and his audience loved it, and perhaps we lose something of that today. Now, it's worth saying, Mozart wasn't just breaking the rules for the sake of it. His artistic sensibility enjoyed the idea of playing with the conventions of the concerto at this point, and his audience enjoyed it too. This is an added advantage of using established forms and genres of music, like the concerto or symphony. They don't just provide you with structures and rules, you can also play with those rules. Another example from a generation later, one I've explored several times in recent videos, Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, which, by the way, also comes with its own title, The Pastoral. How Beethoven subverts the rules of tempo in this work is both subtle and revolutionary. Now, Beethoven had already taken the already revolutionary step of titling each of his movements in his score. He wanted to provide a narrative outline for his soundscape. This symphony describes a day's sojourn in the country. Beethoven loved the countryside. He would get lost on walks for hours. It was sometimes on those walks that great music would come to him. The countryside was inspirational for him, and in many ways, this symphony returns the favor. For the first three movements, the tempos are conventional, totally. The first, titled in the score, Awakenings of Cheerful Feelings on Arrival in the Countryside, is a calm allegro. Allegro, ma non troppo. Allegro, but not too much. Perfect to commence our jaunt in the country. Next comes a slow second movement for a scene by the brook and Dante Moltomoso, medium pace, generic tick. The 
third movement. Now, this is in more than just dance form, it actually is a dance. Beethoven's title sets the scene, a merry gathering of country folk. On his walk, Beethoven has come across a village, and the villagers lead a country dance. Ingeniously, Beethoven has linked generic usage with his own story. But suddenly, a change, an interruption. First, a trickle of rain and a distant sound of thunder. Soon, a full-blooded tempest delivered as only Beethoven can. This storm has done more than just interrupt the country dancing. It's also interrupted the normal structure of the symphony, and we can feel, even today, that rather jagged interruption. Yes, we have a possible last movement that's fast, but this is agitated and frenetic. We can't end here. The symphony needs another movement. What's more, this movement can't be fast. We need rest after that tempest. So, Beethoven ends his work in a slower tempo to the previous movement. Now, again, Beethoven's not breaking the mould for the sake of it. He's not set out to write a five-movement symphony, or to see if he can get away with the final movement that's slower than the previous one. No, Beethoven needs these changes in order to realise his artistic vision. He knows, after the rush of that thunderstorm, that we need a gentler rest. And so that's what he provides. So, there you go. Beethoven and Mozart proving that you can break the rules when you know them. Uh, assuming, of course, that you're also a genius.